You know, the puppet department is like a family. It takes around about 30 people to make one puppet. We're a special breed and we're like a little sort of roving band of gypsies that travel around the world. You know, there's not many of us. We live, sleep, eat and breathe puppets and puppet making. I didn't even know what stop motion animation was when I was a kid. Um, I just knew that I was hopeless at school, at academia. The doodles in my textbooks were way better than what I was supposed to be getting for math and English. So I went to art school and then at the same time I started to collect old Victorian scary dolls. Then I realised that all of the kids' TV I'd grown up with in England was all stop motion. It all sort of made sense to me then. And, you know, making a puppet is very much like making a doll, but it's a doll that you can then bring to life, so it's, it's perfect. I started off as um, a generalist, so I did a bit of everything. You have to save the day when a, a puppet's head falls off, or it's suddenly you're re-sculpting something, you're painting it, you're doing everything. Over the years you grow with it, you learn all the mistakes and you try and act on those mistakes. And I got a phone call and it was Leica and they were, we need somebody who's a good puppet maker to come and set up the puppet department for Coraline. And I went, okay. I'll do it. <laughs> there are 65 artists and craftspeople that work in my department. We have a sculpt department. The sculpts generally then go to the mould making department. And you don't just mould a whole body, you have to separate it into many different moulds so that if a hand breaks, you've got a separate hand. And if they have a change of footwear, you have to have a separate foot mould. The mould makers then hand their finished moulds to the armature department. The armature builders are the people that build the skeletons. They will then hand their armatures and moulds to the casting department. And then, you have to decide how you're going to animate the face. At Leica we've perfected replacement animation. Each mouth shape is a new face that goes on and with each frame of film. And then we have all of sort of the look of the puppets. So the paint, the hair and the costume. Hopefully your end puppet will be a fully animatable, poseable puppet with a costume, with a completely painted sort of face, hair, costume, hands and with a lovely wig. <laughs> and then I'm the, 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 the central person who sort of is in the middle of all of these people making sure everybody is remembering to communicate and everybody knows when they're getting the mould and when the mould is going to the next department. If you forget to tell them one little thing, they could build something and have wasted months. Generally, I'm doing the upfront part of the process. So all the initial problem solving, setting up the teams, setting up the process, everything that I'm doing in a blue, that will be eventually molded in silicon and cast as a hard part. And then everything that I highlight in yellow will be a separate sculpt, which will then sit over the joints and that will be a soft part. I also work very closely with the director and the head of animation to make sure their vision is realised in the performance that the puppets can, can give and then to remind my team that they have to communicate with each other. It took about a week. The dupes we can run in three days or, or less. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I'm just getting ready to cast up these grandfather hands. We're on track with We're those. We're on track. Oh, yeah. yeah. We will be able to get a little additional movement. Yeah, I think that would be good and okay. I think that's what the animator is hoping to get. Yep. Most artists are, they're the sort of the quiet, determined types that go into their own little creative bubbles and they just do their thing. You constantly have to remind artists, no, 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 you need to talk to the person next to you. It'll take from three to six months to make the first one off of the puppet. So that's all the problem solving, getting everything sort of set up for mass production. When you're doing a schedule for a movie, it's usually called a one-line schedule because everything's very linear. You know, with a puppet, it starts off as one line because it starts off as a sculpt and then it explodes into about 500 lines and then it comes back into a final puppet. It's interesting with puppets because they actually have to do more than a real sort of life person. So everything's exaggerated, it's cartoon. So, you know, you have to make these, the, the arms, the legs, just do a little bit, we call it overextension. To do that, we're always having to think about initially what the skeleton 
can do, but then how the material over the top of the skeleton might hinder the movement. It's always a challenge of making them look gorgeous and get all of the performance. And I always say, we, we never finish a puppet until the last day of filming because we are constantly changing it per shot. You think, oh, we've made everything there is to make at this point. You know, we've, we, there's, no, there's no problems left to be solved. But of course, every single story brings a new, a new challenge and a new problem. And each time we start one, we're like, oh, how are we gonna make that? And suddenly it feels like you've just blinked and it's done and these characters have achieved everything the animators have wanted and the best thing is we create these like engineering little sort of masterpieces and the day that we pass it to animation and see them brought to life is incredible and that's what it's all about we're entertaining you know the audience with what we make every day and we're also you know having a good time while we do it as well <laughs>